Hello and welcome to video three for week six. In video two, I talked about two things we can do with parametric curves. We can reparameterize them and we can calculate their arc length. In this video, I'm going to put those two together to talk about a special reparameterization called the parameterization by arc length. This starts with the notion of the arc length function. So if I have a parametric curve, I can set up a function, which is conventionally given the letter S, that calculates, starting from A, going up to T, the length of the curve up to some value T between A and B. So previously, I wanted the length of the whole curve from A to B. Here, this is a function that tells me how much distance I've covered at any point T. And it's exactly the same as the arc length function. It's the derivative of the component squared, square root of all that, and then integrate. Um, since t is now the variable here, I'm using a temporary variable u inside so I don't confuse things. Previously I had the variable t inside, but now I want the variable t to be outside of my integral. I don't want to have t inside and outside the integral. That's a big problem with confusing variables. So I'm going to use a temporary variable u inside the integral. So I get this function. Its domain is the same domain as the curve. It tells me what happens over the time that I move along this curve. At a, it's zero, because then I'll integrate from a to a. That's no distance at all. Um, that will be zero. So it starts at zero. And then s of t is the length of the curve based on time. s of 1, if t is in seconds, will be the distance covered in one second. s of 2 will be the distance covered in two seconds. s of 3 will be the distance covered in three seconds. And then s of b will be the distance covered over the whole uh, domain that we are considering for this parametric curve. So this is the arc length function, takes the notion of arc length, makes it a function. We can evaluate the arc length over any moment of time in the curve to say how far are we along the curve at that time. This lets us do a process of parameterization by arc length. And these are the steps. So first I'm going to calculate the thing I defined in the previous slide, the arc length function. It's calculated by integration, so I have to do an integral. Then I want to invert this. So s is a function of t. I want to invert it to get t as a function of x. The arc length function will always be increasing because it's an arc length function. It's measuring the distance, and the curve has to keep going. Uh, the curve can't stop. So the arc length function will always be counting more and more distance. So the, it, is an, it is a monotonic function. It's always an increasing function. That means that, in theory, it has an, uh, an inverse. So this t of s is a thing that always exists. Whether or not we can actually describe it is an issue. Sometimes we just have to give it a new symbol. We can't actually come up with an expression for the inverse. So that's what I mean by saying that this inversion is always possible. This t of s is a function that exists, but it's not always practical to actually describe it. All right, so then I will use this inverted function to reparameterize the curve, thing I talked about at the start of the previous video, and get gamma of s. And this is then going to be a parameterization where the parameter is the arc length. So this is going to be the unique parameterization where time and distance are in fact the same. It's going to start at 0, and then gamma of s equals 1 will be 1 unit along the curve. Gamma of s equals 2 will be 2 units along the curve. So it tells you not as much about movement, but about distance along the curve. You want to figure out what point is 10 units of distance along the curve, you calculate gamma of s equals 10. You want to figure out what point is 100 units of distance along the curve, you calculate gamma of s equals 100. And that's a very, very useful thing. It's nice to have a parameterization where the parameter tells us distance instead of time. Let me do an example. I'm going to do another helix because these have some nice properties for these integrals. So here's a helix. Um, it has a circle of radius 2 and it has this parameter of 4 that sort of tells us how quickly the height increases. So let's reparameterize this by arc length so that each point um, along this helix, s equals 1, s equals 2, s equals 3, s equals 4, will be 1, 2, 3, 4 units of distance along that helix in the new parameterization. So I do the steps. Here's my curve. It's defined on positive t. I calculate my arc length function. So my arc length function is starting at where the curve starts 0 and goes to t, because I want it to depend on t. So I need the x, y, and z components. Uh, they're derivative squared. I use this temporary variable u. So the derivative of this squared is going to be 4 sine squared u 
replacing t with u for this temporary variable. Derivative of this squared is going to be 4 cosine squared u, replacing t with the temporary variable u. Derivative of 4t is just 4, so I get this 4 squared. Uh, then here I have a sine squared plus cos squared, which is nice. So that's just going to give me 4 times 1. 4 squared is 16. 4 plus 16 is 20. So this just gives me the integral from 0 to t of root 20 with no other terms. And integrating this is going to give me root 20u from 0 to t. Putting in the bounds of integration is going to give me t root 20. So there is my arc length function. This is a particularly nice one. It's just multiplication by a constant. So if I want to invert it, I just divide by root 20. So if I want to express t in terms of s, t is going to be s over root 20 because s was t times root 20. So there's my arc length function. There's my inverse. That's my three-step process as I find the arc length function. I calculate its inverse, and then I replace the t in the original curve with this expression s of root 20. I get this, I get this, I get this. And this is exactly the same helix, but the parameter is now the distance along the helix. So I put in s equals 3, I'll get the point exactly 3 units along the helix. I'll put in s equals 10, I'll get the point exactly 10 units along the helix. That's what the parameterization arc length does. And that finishes this example and this video.